Okay, we're going to get started. How y'all doing today? George Edley on the line here. Today we're going to talk about how to build an organized, systemized company construction machine uh, that works on and on and on without having you to do all the work, right? That's the goal. So uh, how do we do that? How do we do that? So I started my company over 40 years ago and uh, built my company up into a nice company, but I did too much myself. I worked too hard. I didn't have systems. I didn't hold people accountable. You know, I didn't hire the best, hired cheap, uh, did all the wrong things that we all do grow in our business. Uh, it, it's uh, tough, tough to make your company get to the next level with organized and systemized. And when you're starting your own company and you're owning your own business, you just don't want to spend the money. You figure you got to save it, save your way to success. But but that's not that's not how you do it. So what we're trying to do today is figure out how to get yourself organized and systemized so that you can take your company to the next level. And um, that's what I want you to think about. What do I have to do? So I'm I, I, over the last 12, 15 years, I've been a full-time business coach. As you, most of you know, I've written a book, How to Build a Construction Company to Always Make a Profit. And uh, it's been very successful. I've got uh, uh, business templates coming out of it and people ask me for help all the time. So it's a lot, it's really rewarding to me to have that out there as a, on Amazon. And then um, currently I have a, a offering of sessions. If you're interested in sessions, I'd be love to help you. And of course, uh, I've got these groups, Hard at Biz Groups. We meet around the country for invited uh, clients. I ask them, after I've worked with them for a while, I ask them if they'd like to be in one of our groups. And of course, I have my online school. So anyway, I can help you. I'd love to do that. And uh, how, how, today is all about you know getting organized and systemized and building a machine that works. So as we get started here, uh, does your business get stuck in the muck? You know, you just got too much on your plate. Uh, does your business um, hold you back? Does your business hold you from getting to where you want to be? You're just so busy working, you don't have any time. Do you, do you do too much yourself? Do you feel like you're overworked and you're doing too much yourself? You can't let go. You can't find people you want to delegate to. You don't trust people. Do you wear too many hats? Do you still worry about the field? Do you worry about uh, you know, the bids, the estimates, the jobs, the customers, the change orders. Are you wearing too many hats? Do you have people working for you, but you don't let them really run the business? Are you 100% in charge? Does your business work without you? Uh, uh, are you 100% in charge of everything? Are you maxed out and your business isn't reaching its its potential? So I, I always do this fun little org chart. I've got an org chart where I've got uh, sales estimating, project management, supervision, foreman. And I say, okay, fill out your org chart. And they go, well, I'm kind of in charge. And I kind of make all the sales decisions. I approve all the bids. I really do most of the project management. And the soup. I tell us everybody what to do all day and the crews. And, you know, I kind of watch the money real tight. So, so is that a good thing? Are you in charge of too much? Are you in charge of everything? Are you doing too much yourself? Are you stuck at the level of what you can do and what you can control? I always say the more you do, the less money your company will make. So what do I have to do to let go of control? Uh, and I know it's hard. I mean, it was hard for me. It's hard for you. It's hard for everybody. And what are you doing? Are you maxed out? When you're maxed out, you're holding your business back from reaching its full potential. So that's the problem. So when I was 27, um, I started my first job for myself, Headley Construction. And um, out there working with a sub, a, a grading contractor on a small project in Laguna Hills, California. And it was great. And it was hard, though. I was doing everything. I was in charge of the supervision, the project management, construction cleanup, going to the city, getting the permits, writing the contracts, typing the contracts, uh, and, and going to Home Depot, going to the rental yard. You know, you tend to you do too much, you know, you get overloaded. Uh, and it, it, what you don't do is you don't hire. Why don't you hire? Well, why don't I have people? Why don't I have systems? What's wrong with me? And so we get stuck in the muck and it starts to rain and it's all coming in all around us and, and we end up with our head in the sand. And I learned the more you do, the less you make. You can't get rich with your head in a ditch. And so what do I have to do? Well, I, I don't know about you, but I drew the contractor self-portrait. We just keep working really hard and we just 
basically hang ourselves more and more, right? So think about your business. Uh, what's your potential? What could you be doing if you weren't stressed out, overworked, et cetera? What could you be doing that you're not doing? What should you be doing you're not doing? You're doing too much yourself. That's why you're here today. I guarantee it. So there's potential for sales, lots of it out there, but we don't go get it because we're too busy, you know, running work, bidding work, whatever we're doing. We're not chasing good customers. And, and eventually we get some work and it starts spitting out some money, profit, value, and growth. But there's, there's a shutoff situation. What's shutting off your potential? Generally, there's a shutoff valve, which is slowing down your growth, your profit, your money, and you feel stuck. You feel like you're not getting to the level. You're going, I get calls from people after literally, you know, they've been in business 20 years and they go, I just can't get my company to move forward. It's the same thing every day over and over again. I just, what do I do? How do I get my business to work so I don't have to do the work? When people call me and say, can you help me with my business? I say, what are your goals? I want to sell my business. Well, if you're not there, there is no business. You've got to get it systemized and organized with a team to run your business, now you got some. But when you're there doing all the work, who wants to buy a job? I'm not going to buy a job. I want a company that works with or without me. I got a bunch of friends I golf with on a regular basis. Uh, and they go in like two days a week, one day a week. They have big businesses, $10 million, $20 million, $30 million businesses. They literally go in, you know, they've got a general manager, they've got a sales manager, they got an operations manager, they got a shop manager, they got a field manager. And they run the business and they got most of them have a president or, or a general manager. What do you have? And if it's just you, you, you got nothing. You got a business where you got to do the work. You are the business. And so what do I got to do to get the shutoff valve opened? I got to remember I'm the shutoff valve. I'm the one who's holding my company back from being organized and systemized. So many years ago, well, what do you must do to build an organized construction machine? So anyway, 100 years ago, that's when I was like 40 or something. I can remember. That's a good picture, huh? Uh, still got no hair, but everything else is a little bigger. Uh, even, but the time might be smaller. But anyway, uh, back in the old day, I was trying to do everything myself. Uh, I wanted to grow. I wanted to get organized. I wanted to get systemized. I wanted to have an accountable business run by my management team. But I was doing everything myself. I was trying to do it all myself. I was managing all the jobs or, or at least meeting with all the project managers and the superintendents and going to the job, meeting my concrete foreman. And I was looking at every bid. And even though I had an estimator, I'd go over it like a fine tooth comb, uh, attending every job meeting where there's customer change order negotiations, supervising, organizing the crews. And so I drew a picture. It's kind of like this. You know, there was me out on the job site where should I put the really important messages? I'd go out on the job and I'd come back with 20 post-it notes or pieces of drywall or cardboard with notes. People told me things that I needed to do for them. So now they've got me working for them, my superintendents, my foreman, my project managers. Say, George, can you do this for me? Can you help me with this? Can you? So you, of course you're going to say yes, because it's your company. So what are you going to do? Where should I put the really important messages? No, no you should solve them yourself but I don't have the boots but to say that to them, right? And so I didn't even delegate important decisions, what, what kind of coffee we should buy. I, I'd still go to Staples. I'd still, you know, coffee, paper clips, Home Depot. You know, I'd still do all the buying because, I, you know, I mean, I had 30, 40 guys at the time. I still wouldn't let them make a decision more than like, you know, $5, right? So, so what's the solution here? It drove, it drove me nuts. At, at the age of 40, I was, I mean, I started my company when I was 28, 27. By the time I was 40, I was burned out. I was overworked and stressed out and took me to 50 to wake up. Another 10 years of stress and struggle and trying to figure it out. And so what do I got to do? And so I go to the doctor, hey, George, you're in bad shape. You got you to gotta fix yourself, right? And so we get overloaded. We get overloaded. And, and we do too much ourselves. It's like a vicious circle. And uh, we get out of control. We do too much ourselves. We don't have any systems. And even if we do, they're not enforced. And I don't even want to do the systems because I don't like systems because I'm an entrepreneur. I don't, you know, nobody holds me accountable. So I don't hold anybody accountable. 
And I won't delegate anything. I won't let go. As sort of a micromanager. I don't have any training program because, you know, that costs money. And uh, what do you do? And so I, I won't promote anybody to the next level and let them make decisions. I don't know about you. Does this sound familiar? So what happens is we get too busy, which means we're not focused. We're not focused on the primary functions of an owner manager. We do too much ourselves. We react. We don't have a plan. We don't have a written plan, one, three, five-year plan. We fight fires. It's all we do. You know, we're the firefighter. And we slow down. When we make decisions ourselves, we don't research, research all the options. We spend more money than we should. Our people are better at making financial decisions than I am because I'm too quick. I just want to get it over with. You know, I, rather than get another bid from a supplier, I'll just let's go with Joe because, you know, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have time to deal with, you know, better companies saving more money, right? And so I become non-efficient. I leak money and I'm not productive. So what happens when I don't have enough time to create a job cost scorecard for the field? So when they start the job, they know how many hours they need in order to stay on budget. And what, what happens when I don't have enough time to invest in doing a weekly job cost update report? Well, I, I lose money. So how do I get that done? I've got to identify it as a problem and fix it. If accounting swamped, I need to hire somebody else in accounting to help them do that report. Or I need to force my project manager to do it. And if they're too busy, I need to take a hard look at them and get somebody better or replace them or give them an assistant, right? It's all about time and money. It's really simple. So what happens is we tend to lose money down the drain, saving our way to you know, no profit. And we get stuck, we stop growing, Profit shrinks. We don't have systems. We're stressed out. We go home. We're all grumpy. And uh, the solution, right? What's the solution? Good people or good systems? So that's the big question. What do I need? Well, there's no right answer. The answer is yes. If I have good people and no systems, I got a, I got a nightmare. If I have good systems and no people, I got a nightmare. So today we're going to talk about systems. We need to install great systems. Obviously, I need people. I need to have people do my job. Otherwise, I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. I should be out what? What should you out be doing? I should be out negotiating contracts, taking customers to lunch, going fishing or hunting with my good customers, seeking better customers. I should be out motivating my foreman. I should be working hard with my accounting team to, to really get focused on the right numbers. I should get my software totally perfect. What else should I be doing? What should you be doing? Upgrading my systems, holding people accountable to perform, meeting with my people on a regular basis. What should you be doing? So I got to have both, good people, good systems. And then I have to enforce the systems and hold people accountable to implement and produce results. Otherwise, my business looks like a three-ring circus. We juggle. We walk a tightrope, we get shot out of a cannon, a lion tamer, you know, working with monkeys and clowns. And then we end up having to clean up after the elephants when they all go home at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm still there working, cleaning up the mess. So what do I need is I need enforced written systems. And then my business will start to work the way I want it to work, like a machine. And so think about McDonald's. Is their success factor People or systems? Well, it's obviously systems. So if you ask anybody who's ever worked at a McDonald's, you know, how do they know how to build the same hamburger every single time? Well, they have a picture behind the counter, lettuce pickers, mayonnaise, ketchup, whatever it is, of how to build a hamburger. And they have training. I was watching a, <coughs> excuse me, last night I was watching a business show and they were talking about how do I compete? as a restaurant with company with these chains that have training. I don't have time and money for training. So we do bad service and lose customers. Well, that's what's happened to you. You have bad systems or unenforced systems and you lose money. Your productivity goes down the toilet, right? So systems allow you to be organized and uh, achieve your goals without you being there 
all day. I've never seen an owner sitting in a McDonald's micromanaging the hamburger, the mayonnaise, and the ketchup, right? Have you? Um, so systems must be, uh, uh, well, here's a hamburger. So what do we got to do? How do we get it to be the same, right? So, you know, is it two pickles? Yeah, it's two pickles every time. If you let the cooks decide how many pickles, you'd sell, they put five on there, three on there. You ever check out of a McDonald's or fast food and they hand you, I'll take ketchup. They hand you like 20 ketchup ke uh, uh, packets. Well, I just want one. How much money does that cost McDonald's every year to give you an extra four pickles packets, ketchup packets every time you drive through? That's that's a billion dollars probably, right? So we got to have standards and systems, even McDonald's needs them. So I got to replace myself with systems, create a playbook, and then it's written, monitored, and enforced. If I don't have a playbook, I can't call the right play, and I can't hold people accountable, and I can't win the game. So I need a playbook with clear pictures of how we're supposed to run this business. And then I can produce the same consistent re winning results every single time. So are you the playbook or do you have a playbook which involves training time? You know, football, they play what, 60 minutes a week? Now they play more than that with all the timeouts, but call it two, three hours. They practice four or five days a week, like six hours a day for a three hour performance. Now, you, I know you can't afford three or four days of training, but how about one hour a week? Come on, that's only, that's about two and a half percent of your payroll cost. So systems, so why do we need systems? Here's one of my concrete jobs I did years ago in San Bernardino, and here we are. And you know, yeah, there's some um, stakes. The finishing uh, sub, we sub the finishing, um, kick some of the stakes out so he's, he could get his whirly bird going around. But you notice the stakes are the same distance apart. Every stake is roughly two foot six apart. And then we have a kicker, every other stake. That's our standard. And we have a, a finished edge. That's our standard. And we have doweled rebar. That's our standard. Why? Because that eliminates cracks and the edge chipping or flaking off. That's how we do business. That's our standard. We train our standard so that we don't end up with each foreman doing it their own way. We've got to have it done the same way on every job so that we can produce the, the same results every single time. That's what we want. Consistent performance, consistent production. Production is always the same square foot, lineal foot, cubic yard per man hour, per crew hour, and results right? So we need to have systems that are really simple. Simple. I want them on one page, three by five, each, no paragraphs, no long sentences. I, I see companies, they have their office manager create the systems. You know, they try hard, but there's way too many words. Field guys want bullet points, pictures, and arrows. Give me a picture and tell me what you want. One stake every two feet apart, three feet apart, one dowel every four feet. It, just make it simple. Clearly simple. Don't don't give me a whole six six pages of paragraphs I have to read. I'm not going to remember. I, I'll fall asleep after the first paragraph, right? I'm a contractor. I'm a guy, and uh, so 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 I got to have simple. I've got to have written. I've got to have team design. So I want the team to help me design the systems. I don't want to hand them a system, and they go, "Oh, George, the boss, he handed us a system." That'll never work. No, I want a couple of foremen. I want an office person. I want a project manager on the team to design the system that works for everybody. Sometimes we even have an accounting person or an estimator in the meeting, right? So each system requires a team to design it. Then we write it. And then, of course, we train it. We make sure everybody clearly understands it. And then we monitor and enforce it. If it's not implemented and enforced, what's the point, right? So I've seen so many companies have systems sitting in the drawer that people don't use anymore. And people go, eh, I don't know. They don't really work. Well, they work if you use them. The reason they don't work because you don't use them. It's pretty obvious, right? So, so I, I was a, I was a tilt up contract, tilt, tilt up concrete for uh, years. I had my own crews and there's a bunch of ways to do tilt up. So this company uses the, uh, the block system for their forming. So the form doesn't, you know, collapse. They, they, drill down a, um, a base plate and then put up two by eight, two by 10, whatever it is. 
uh, every two feet, and that's their system. Hey, good for them. They got a system. Now, this company bought, went out and bought these metal forms. That's great, too. It costs a little money, but you don't have any waste. So it probably, in the long run, is a better, better uh, choice of money. Now, this company uh, is a little different. They got, uh, they got some metal, and they got some wood kickers on the higher forms. So it looks like the 12-inch forms, they're using wood kickers. They didn't buy the 12-inch metal forms. So everybody does it differently. Uh, we used to pour a lot of door frames. This is one of my jobs from the old days. And uh, the door frames kept tweaking in. And so how do we fix that? The concrete would pour against those thin, you know, 22, 24 gauge, whatever they are, door frames, hollow metal door frames, and they would bend a little bit. Then the door would never close properly, open properly. So we had to come up with a really stout system. So I got the foreman together, two or three of them, and my Finnish carpenter door hanger guy. And we came up with a solid solution to solve the problem. And uh, then they've done it ever since. And it, we've never had a bad door since. It's unbelievable if you just think about it. So when you have a problem, identify it and then fix it. So when we get together, would you imagine a construction business without a clear understanding of what's expected? The standard for perfection, the guideline, the expectations, what, 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 how we want people to do things. How about on a field crew? Would you, could you imagine a crew without a budget, detailed set of plans, who's responsible, uh, systems, level of authority? Or how about a football team without a playbook, without detailed plays that have been trained and trained and trained? That would be impossible. Or how about basketball without some plays? You know, we just saw, uh, I just saw last night the Denver, Denver uh, Nuggets win the NBA. You know, it's awesome. And it's all about plays. You see some of those plays, they're just unbelievable. They just throw pass to the guy and he dunks it. It's crazy, right? So everybody on the team, you know, here's Nick Saban of Alabama. You know, he's all about plays. He's up there reading off his plays and holding people accountable, right? Everybody on the team must know exactly what's expected of them, their job description, their position description, and the system that they're to install. So think about yourself. Do you have written systems that you can hold people accountable for? Do you have meetings to hold people accountable? Are you dedicating time? Time equals money. You spend time, you make more money. Time buys, time and people are what buy back your time. That's the key. What I was trying to say. Sorry. So anyway, so so how do we do it? We start with a simple. I, I created this years ago. Uh, written gear, G E A R, uh, G guidelines. I've got to have clear written guidelines, pictures, checklists, uh, bullet points uh, of what's expected, the end result, what it looks like when it's finished. But if I don't have those, I can't hold people accountable, and I can't hold people responsible. How do I hold somebody accountable for something he doesn't know how to do it? They can't read your mind, and I don't want to go out there every five minutes and tell them what to do. So I've got to have written pictures of guidelines and clear expectations of the results expected. Then I can hold them accountable. So accountabilities and responsibilities, uh, goals, deadlines, uh, timelines, uh, who's doing what when, you turn in reports on Friday, whatever account you're accountable to do and responsible to achieve. You're responsible to hit this budget or to install so many door frames a week or a day or an hour, right? That's the key. So we create a manual and we hold our team accountable to perform. So we have to draft a written, maintained, enforced, what I call my do manual, how we do manual. Um, I've got a client, Merit Construction. He calls it his manual the Merit Way. I love that. That's a good name. It kind of matches his name, right? It's not spelled the same, but same idea, right? And uh, I got another client, Golden Construction, you know, the golden way. This is how we do it. But whatever you want to call it, just call it your, your company playbook. It's how you do business. It's visual pictures of your checklist, your startup, your closeout, how you pour concrete, how you frame slabs, how you, how you do a job meeting with your customer, how do you hold a a, a punch list? What's a punch list look like? Uh, all those kinds of things, your standard procedures, your checklists, uh, pre-slab checklist, pre-pour, pre-lift, pre-backfill, all those things, right? So it's guidelines and checklists. 
and we can use them as training tools. So how I created systems, I was getting so frustrated. And I had all these people, I, had about, I don't know, way over 100 people working for me. And I got six, uh, six project managers, 12 superintendents. I got three or four concrete foremen and 75 guys on the crew. And I, I want to get this stuff organized. It was just felt totally out of control. So, so I got, we, we, we identified, we made, we got everybody together. And we identified the things that we needed to fix. They were causing profit loss, slowdowns, issues, challenges, customer problems. And we made a list. And then we said, let's do one a week, one a week, 52 or 50, if you want to give a couple of weeks off for good behavior, one system a week. So every week, on Friday afternoon, we would pick a system. I'd pick a system and say, okay, time cards aren't filled out right. Time cards, bring in the two foremen, project manager, and accounting manager. Let's have a meeting on the time cards and get them the way we want them so we can do good job cost tracking. What's next? Job startup checklist. We always run out of stuff. We don't have what we need. Okay, let's bring in the project manager, the superintendent, maybe a foreman. Bring them in, a couple of them, two or three. We'd make a checklist for job startup. Uh, change order template. Okay, we're losing money on change orders. Let's, let's create a change order template. Uh, you know, right on down the list. And at the end of the year, I probably did 40 the first year. That's a lot of systems. But we were so much more organized. And so then we'd have a monthly field meeting, bring in the form and the superintendents, the project managers, and we would explain the new systems and force, force them to be... Uh, it, uh, implemented and uh, used on a regular basis. And the key is it really turned us around. I didn't have a mess anymore. I had a great company. And then now I needed some people. So what do I do? We got to get better people. But first we got to get organized or first we got to get people. It doesn't matter. You can hire somebody who's been working for a large company who has all these systems and they'll bring them with them and they can you can invest a month or two with them creating your system do manual. That's one way to do it. Yeah, but it costs money. Yeah, but you're losing money every hour because you're so unorganized. So biz systems are mandatory. They're mandatory. And here's the key. There's no excuses. If you don't use them, you don't work here. Time cards are done online, period. There's no more paper time cards. You don't work here if you're not smart enough to figure out and we'll help you and we'll train you to figure out how to type in eight hours or two hours on each cost code on your job. Come on, let's get going here. Do a startup and a closeout checklist. Do a weekly punch list. Do a job, job, cost, uh, co job cost update report every week. Do a daily dog. I mean, you've got to learn these things. It's standard practice, right? We've got to review our job costs at the end of every job and update our cost history library. These are mandatory systems that will improve your company. So what we need to do then to get rolling is start a fix-it list. Start a fix-it list. So, so I like a flip chart, piece of paper, or uh, just take a yellow pad, stick it on the corner of your desk, have all your key people have a yellow pad called fix-it list. And then when you have a regular meeting with them, we all bring it in, we all put them on a flip chart and we list out everything that needs to be fixed. Once you start building the list bigger and bigger, you can separate it. Uh, sort it by, you know, construction operations, project management, field management, foreman, uh, equipment, accounting, administration, however you want to do it, because we want to sort of pick the right systems under the right umbrellas, right? So, so what are some things that you need to work on? So I just thought about what needs improvement in your company? You're, you're losing money on jobs, your labor over budget? Well, Let's create a system. What can you do to stop it? And I've got the system. I know exactly what you need to do. But are you doing it? What do you need to do? We need to have a weekly job cost report updated by accounting that goes to the project foreman every week. And the project manager needs to walk the job of the foreman and review it. It's pretty obvious. Well, I don't have time for that. Well, then keep losing money and quit whining. Accept your fate as a low profit contractor who works too many hours. Or maybe you need to get rid of your callbacks, rework or punch list. How can we eliminate callbacks? Well, bring the guys in and say, why are we having so many callbacks? Rework or punch list? Well, it's because we, we leave the job and we don't do our own punch list. 
We walk or we leave before we walk the job and make sure it's perfect. Or we leave before we go talk to our supervisor or the supervisor of our customer and make sure that they're happy with our work. We're too busy to go and off to the next job so we can have to come back to this job at three times the price for a fifth move in to pick up some concrete and some leftover stuff from three months ago on the job site. And also your reputation's down the toilet. Uh, what about accurate estimates? You missed some stuff. What, what, that's pretty obvious. What do we need to do? Every time you miss something, we need to add it to our estimating template. That, I never see that getting done. Estimator keeps bidding and bidding and bidding using the same template. It needs to be updated every month at least. So the estimator needs to meet with a foreman, the project managers. What did we miss? What do we didn't miss? What do I need to add to the template? Boom, done. Uh, we don't have any loyal customers. Well, duh. When's the last time you took any of them to the ball game, fishing, hunting, golfing, lunch, dinner, took them a thank you card or a birthday gift? When's the last time you did anything for them? So that, that, that's a four hour discussion, but it can be done. You're going to keep bidding cheap unless you build some trust. Uh, you know, I never, I never met anybody who got married without spending a lot of time with their potential spouse uh, before, you know, building loyalty and trust. You need more foreman and crews. What are you doing about that? Well, you're not promoting anybody. You're not letting anybody move up. You're not forcing the foreman to uh, promote from within and train their number two. Uh, you're not, no, who's in charge of hiring in your company? Probably nobody. Um, so what are you doing about it? If you're doing nothing, it ain't going to happen. And uh, I have to make too many decisions. Well, it's because every time they bring you a question, you just answer it. You don't say, what, sh what do you think the right answer is? You just keep saying, okay, do this. So they're waiting for you to make the decisions for them instead of them taking accountability and responsibility for making their own decisions. So there, there's so many things we could discuss. Software, which ones, which not one. I got people who call me and I tell them exactly what software to use. And I got other people like call me and I tell them what to use and, or to, to, to search. And they, they keep looking at 15 other options. I mean, get on with it. Make a decision. Every software is basically the same. Just get on with it. Just different prices and just different level of, of, um, of add-ons, right? Just make, what can you afford and what can you get for the most money? Uh, the, the most for the money, right? So seven steps. What do we got to do here? We start with a fix-it list. Uh, we're going to create a do manual. And number one, we start a fix-it list. We identify the areas we need to fix. So we just start writing down. When I meet with a company, a lot of companies have me come in for a couple of days and work with their management team and their company to help them improve and improve their profit, their production, their productivity, their marketing, their sales, estimating, whatever it is. And the first thing we always do is identify areas that are broken. They're not working too well. We need to improve them. And then we can make a solution for those and prioritize them. And then we can make a solution for them. So number two is to prioritize because you only got so much time. If you do one a week, one, two, one, two a month, I mean, even two a month is 24 a year. That's, that's great. That's huge. So uh, we, we got the list. We rank them, you know, which is high priority, which is low priority. You know, we need a new, uh, we need to paint the front door. That's probably low priority. But we need to get the job cost tracking going so we don't go over budget. That's a high priority, but it's more work. It takes a lot of time. So we prioritize it and, and we make a list of the top priorities. And then we assign a captain, a coordinator, and a team. So let's say we want to work on job cost tracking. We need uh, a captain. So who would be that? Probably a strong project manager is a good numbers guy. Uh, you need a team, probably need a couple, for, maybe a foreman, superintendent, uh, maybe someone from project administration or accounting. And you need a company coordinator, the keeper of the system. Somebody needs to be the central place where all the systems are kept. I just work with a company in uh, uh, Montana a few weeks ago and they have an office manager. She's the system coordinator. That's not her title, but that's what she does. And every once in a while she emails me, George, what do you think about this or this? And I'll send her what I've got. And she, oh man, that's great. So we, we, we really worked hard to get her systems up to speed. So we pick a systems captain, the coordinators just along for the ride to, keep track and put everything into the company computer and all that, the database. And then number four, they draft the systems. They draft the checklist, the system, the standard, the follow-up tracking, 
you're going to do something that is mandatory, we need a tracking system to make sure it gets done. And number five, uh, then we have that team try it. Let's try it for a few weeks to see if it really works. Sometimes you're not sure it's going to be easier, what some of the problems are. So like when we're doing a job cost, we usually try it with one crew. And then we, if it works for a month or so, then we move it out to the whole company. Uh, we want to make sure we got all the kinks worked out before we get the whole company frustrated that this thing doesn't work. And then number six, we implement it and we train it. When we have our, our monthly foreman meeting, we train. When we have our weekly superintendent meeting or every two week superintendent meeting, we train. When we have our accounting meeting, we train. We get everybody up to speed on the new systems. And then, of course, my job as the owner manager leader is to make sure it's get these systems are maintained and enforced. So I'm going to talk to my managers and say, I notice they're not the day I've heard the daily time cards aren't coming in on time. I've heard the job cost tracking is a little behind. I've heard we're not billing our customers on a regular timely manner. What the heck are you going to do about it? That's your job to make sure it's happening. So that's what we got to do. I've got to be tougher, more firm. I've got to hold people accountable. And I've got to enforce. My key word I'm adding to my vocabulary, enforce. So I got systems. I got to enforce them. I go to so many companies and they got a whole system for everything. And nobody uses it. Why? Because the owner or the president doesn't enforce it. He doesn't care. He's too busy working to make any money. He's too busy putting out fires to worry about, you know, is the time cards done right? You know, he, he just, we got to get him off the do into the, into the grow and, and build a great company, right? So systems need to be uh, uh, simple. One page checklist, pictures, bullet points, visual, a lot of pictures, a lot of diagrams, a lot of arrows. Um, some companies use video. That's great. Some companies uh, will send the office manager or the systems coordinator out to the field with a camera and the foreman and they'll point to stuff, do it this way, do it this way, and they'll take pictures. And that'll go on the written team design system. So then of course, it's mandatory. We all do it or we don't. You're either gonna do it or you're not. I mean, so I sit and work with people all day on systems. I mean, are you gonna do it or not? Well, we're so busy. Well, then what do you waste time with me? You're not gonna do it, let's not do it. If you're not going to do it, that's fine. Continue to lose money, but whining. Just keep losing money, right? And uh, then you got to monitor and enforce them, right? So, so what are your best systems to achieve company results and project results? You know, there's a lot of other things you try to accomplish, customer results. But what would encourage you and your company to achieve your overall company goals? You know, sales, profit, cash flow, uh, payments, um, hiring, employee development, safety. And then at the project level, what are some things that will guarantee that you will finish jobs on time? Quality, no punch list, no callbacks, on budget. You know, you don't go over budget. You know your numbers, you're up to speed, you're up to track, you get paid, your change orders are paid. What are some things that you must do? You know what they are. You, you don't need me to help you, but I'm glad to help you. If you want some help, give me a holler. I'll, uh, we'll get right on it. But that's what I want you to think about. I mean, it's you. You can figure this out. What do you need to do to improve your results? It's all about results, right? And so think about if I can help you. I mean, I got a couple more things to cover. I just want to give you an update on a couple of things here, a little, little free ad here because, uh, you know, free seminar. So first thing is I'm, I'm planning an in-depth business owner summit, Profit Builder Mastery. We're going to meet with a small group, four to six people, two to three days. And if you're interested, I'm here to help. Uh, I want, if you're interested, you've got to email me. I'm closing out the the date, it, I'm going to work really close with a handful of people. We're going to build your business plan. We're going to work on how to get through the recession 
We're going to work on uh, your systems. We're going to work on your, your org chart and your management team, how to get people to do what you want them to do. And we're going to try to figure out how to grow your business with profitable work. Um, double your profits, you know, get find better work, all that kind of product and improve your bottom line. So if you're interested, email me and I'll send you the flyer on it. The next workshop I'm going to do is in August and uh, it's a three and a half hour construction financial management webinar. And it's for you and your controllers. A lot of companies I work with, their controller is not trained in construction financial management. Uh, and so I do a in-depth, you know, we talk about whip schedules, PL, over under billings, uh, profit markup, cash flow, what should your labor rates really be, how to do job cost tracking, everything a bookkeeper, accounting manager should do, must do in order for you as the owner manager to make more money. So we're going to really dig in. So last time I had about 60 people in it, 80 of, 80, about 40 of them were the uh, bookkeepers and staff of accounting companies training for their key people in the accounting department. So I did it in August because a lot of accounting people are still manning the ship during August while the owner goes away. So if you're interested, uh, you'll get a, a link to that on uh on my newsletter and uh, hope to have you sign up. I do charge for that. It's pretty cheap. It's like, I, I can't remember the exact price, around 135, 40 bucks for the three and a half hour and includes a pretty detailed 10 to 30 page workbook, um, depending on the topics I add to it. So that's what we're going to do. If you're interested, let me know. Um, okay, closing out, just some last thoughts and then we'll open up for questions. Managing manager. So you as a business owner manager are a managing manager. You manage people under you. In fact, one of my clients called me a couple hours ago and has got a problem with his superintendents and his field workers. They're all in this big argument. So what are you doing managing them? You've got two really good project managers. Why aren't they managing them? So I'm going to get all two project managers and this guy on the phone. I'm going to say, look it. Why is the owner calling me to solve your problem. You've got to solve the problem. So the managing manager's job, and if you're a small business, like 10, 20, 30 million, that's not small, but it's small. You're still managing the managers. You're still managing project managers, estimators, maybe supervisors. So you've got to make it your top priority to be an effective manager, not just the owner, estimator, sales, firefighter. you got to Hold these people accountable to do their job. So you got to take time. You got to dedicate time to meet with them. You got to meet with them every week. You got to meet with your direct reports every week for probably an hour, monitor, enforce, mentor, and coach. If you're meeting with a project manager, you need to go through the list. What's on the list? You got all the contracts signed. You got all the shop drawings approved. Are you on schedule? Are you on budget? You got a punch list. What about your change orders, RFIs? Uh, uh, how are we doing? What's going on out there? You holding your meetings? Which subs are performing? Which suppliers are performing? Which aren't? Um, where where are you on your job cost? Are you on budget? You over budget? So I've got to dedicate time to meet with them and hold them accountable to do their job. Otherwise, they're running free. And so what happens? I walk down the hall and I say, "How you doing, Joe?" And he goes, "Pretty good." You on schedule? Pretty much. You on budget? Pretty much. So what did Joe just do to me? He lied to me. He, 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 he told me what I thought, what he thought I wanted to hear, so I would not dig in. I would stop and say, show me your budget. Show me your updated schedule. Uh, I don't really have it. Show me your signed changers. Uh, I'm getting them next week. So I've got to hold them accountable to perform. Otherwise, I'm losing money. So I've got to dedicate at least one day a week to managing my people, my direct reports. So my financial manager, uh, my project managers, my general superintendent, I don't know what how your company's organized, but whoever reports to me and I'm accountable for, response, they, they report to me, they look to me for oversight. I've got to meet with them on a regular basis every week and go through the list. So I've got to hold these meetings with my direct reports every single week. 
And they're, they're not, hey, how you doing? Everything's great. Okay. So, no, they're, let's talk about activities, deadlines, results that are required for you to perform. So daily, I'm going to meet with my assistant. So I've got an assistant assigned to me. I don't care if you got one, you need one. Who is your assistant? Who helps you as the top manager, president, general manager, whatever your role is? Who helps you as your assistant? Got to meet with them every day, every week, and make sure they're doing what you ask them to do. Then every week, I got to meet with Estimating. I just got to. How you doing? You on tap? You, you're going to meet the budget? How you doing on the, did you do the preliminary estimate? Let me look at the general conditions and schedule. And then every week I got to meet with my finance and accounting manager, go through the P&L, the, the accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash report, uh, all those kinds of things on a weekly basis. I want to make sure we're doing okay. We got collecting money. I got to meet every week with, if my project manager reports to me with my project manager and or superintendent, I've got to meet with them every week to make sure they're doing their job if they report to me. And then every other week, I got to get my foreman and superintendents in the office and we have a foreman superintendent meeting. So we have a general meeting of them. And then um, every month I meet with my management team. So I don't know if you've got one, but if you don't, that's your goal. Uh, who's your number two? Who's your number two and a half? And then quarterly, we have an all company team meeting, which is focused on results. So we've got to have a clear understanding of what my job is. My job is to do more than just own the company and run the company. I've got to have a regular check-in time with all my people. When I say check-in, I mean accountability session. And uh, so that lastly, as we get close to the end here, you know, systems, meetings, accountability, org chart. People have got to know what their standards for their position require. So do you have a written org chart? with clear job descriptions, clear accountabilities and responsibilities? Are you enforcing them to do them? That's one of the most important things I do when I go to a company. We sit down with all the players and we create an org chart. And then we clearly define the roles and responsibility and a flow chart for everybody in the company. You know, can you imagine a football team, NFL, if they didn't have an org structure and who reports to who and who calls the plays? And you know, a playbook that everybody has to call and follow. So your business is currently designed to achieve the results you're currently achieving. So if you're, if you're working too many hours, it's because you've decided that that's okay. And you're not going to get any better because you're continuing to do what you've always done. You know, most get stuck at the level of what they can do and control. If I can control 10 people, my company never gets above 10 people or two foremen or two crews, or two project managers. I get stuck because I'm not willing to grow to the next level and delegate systems and accountabilities. So therefore, I don't have any time to go do what I really should do, my top priorities. Focus on customers, focus on growth, focus on improving my profit, focus on developing systems that improve productivity. Recruiting and hiring, seeking better investments. How about starting investments? And maybe take a Friday off every once in a while so I can spend more time with my family and my kids. So the key though is I've got to design my org chart and allow for profitable growth. That's the key. And if I don't, it's not going to happen. So, so. One of the must-dos is hiring. If you're maxed out, what are you going to do unless you hire? Hiring buys your time back. You pay a guy 100 grand, you bought yourself a lot of time. Pay your guy 50, pay an assistant 40 or 50 grand, you buy yourself some time. You know, whatever you can afford. But that extra 100 grand at 10% or 20% is, you know, half a million to a million dollars in sales. I guarantee you'll go out and double that. You can go out and grab two more million dollars of work if you're not doing all the fire firefighting. So a hundred grand costs you 10%, a million dollars of work. I guarantee you can go get more than a million dollars of work if you delegate, hire the right person 
and then eventually hire your number two, the person to run your construction operations. If you get that person in place, I know a couple of you on the line here have hired a great, uh, a great controller, financial manager. Boy, that's really freed you up so you can go estimate and sell more, which is great. But what if you had a general manager to run your field? Now you could double your business or 25% increase it and make more money. That's the key. So hiring the right people buys your time back. So think about that. So what I have to do then is put the right players, hire and put the right players in the right positions. You got the wrong players in the wrong position, you're never gonna have a great company. You gotta change, be bold, be decisive, do what you need to do. You know what you need to do. You know, well, maybe Susie should go over here. No, no, Susie's a bad apple. Susie needs to instantly improve or instantly be replaced. You have to decide. And you can work with people. A lot of people do get better. Maybe they're in the wrong position. And, and, and maybe they don't have the right talent. Or maybe their attitude's bad because they, whatever, for whatever reason. We can't live with that. Gossip and talking behind your back. We just can't live with that. And uh, we got to have people that will grow their company, our future needs and allow our business to make more money and move to the next level. So what are you doing about your systems and your people? So if we look at our org chart, we've got four basic areas. We gotta, we gotta build some investments, some wealth. We gotta win some work, grow the business. We gotta price work accurately. We gotta build it, we gotta get the projects built. We gotta have a great HR team builder environment promotion with the, with, from within, talent development, all those kinds of things, training. Then we have to have a great support team, uh, administration, construction administration, estimating uh, assistant, marketing assistant, and of course, our admin and finance department. Who's got to be really good. So where, where do you, where do you need a, where do you got a hole? Which box are you in that you shouldn't be in? If you're in any of these boxes that you shouldn't be in, you need to Look at your bottom line and figure out what I got to do to make it happen, right? So winning coach keeps saying, I need to add better people. You know, uh, Tampa Bay, you know, they're crazy. They go out and hire Tom Brady and pay $50 million or whatever they paid. They invested to get the right people to win the, win the game. It was a great investment. It wasn't a stupid decision. What are you holding back? What decision are you holding back? because you think it's stupid or you can't afford it. So do you have the right people in the right positions? So I got to I got to have some job, I got to have the job descriptions, a clear accountabilities and responsibilities, chain of command and of course who's who has authority. So we're going to look and work together to build team design job descriptions. So here's a team I worked with years ago, RACC, uh, this, these two guys in the brown hat and the blue hat those two guys are in my peer groups. They've been in there for 10 years. I've known them forever. And these guys, they're all writing their job descriptions. They're coming up with their checklists and their job meetings. And uh, here's another company I worked with a few months ago. Uh, all the all the county people, or all the estimatings working in the back, coming up with their job descriptions. And uh, here's the uh, project managers and uh, superintendents, project manager, uh, project manager assistant working with their job descriptions coming up with our must do's and me talking to the marketing team down at the bottom. So, and up at the top is the HR department and safety department coming up with their list. So we create job descriptions. I don't do it myself. I want my team to do it. And then we come up with a written list on budget. Here's what you gotta do. And here's what you gotta do on schedule. So these are the things that we want the project manager to do. And uh, so, so closing out, what are the top priorities of business owners and managers? Uh, you know, these are some of my great clients. Some of them are doing 100 and 150 million. Some of them are doing 120. One guy's doing 30 plus and a whole bunch of other stuff, adding up over 100. The guy on the top left's top 100 ENR. And what do they do that most smaller businesses don't do? They focus on results. They focus on leadership. They focus on system strategy and structure. They don't do it. They make sure it's done. They make sure they got the best people. And they make sure they grow the business. They generate high margin contracts and revenue. 
what's your role? Putting out fires, worrying about doorknobs and wood. Make sure your masonry guys show up on time. Make sure this, that, and the other thing. What are you doing you shouldn't be doing? What should you be doing? That's what I want you to focus on. Systems, people, structure, strategy, focus. What do you should be doing to get to the next level? Okay, so hopefully uh, I've kicked you in the fanny enough to make you think. Uh, so here's what I want you to think about. There's, we get a return on energy, ROE. It goes back and forth. And I want you to remember that your calendar is a clear indicator of where your priorities are. What, what priorities do you want to be at the top of the list? And what priorities are you investing your time in? Just take a hard look at your calendar and your day-to-day -day activity. Did you even get to your customer development program or your talent development program or your hiring program or your systems creation? No, you're too busy. So keep your number one priority, your number one priority. That's the key here. And so if this is a picture of you, I hope it's not. Uh, if it is, what are you going to stop doing and what are you going to start doing? That's the key for investing your hour or so in our session today. And I want to thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the, uh, uh, turn on the, uh, let you guys talk with questions. Here's somebody's asked me a question. Uh, yes, I took, I answered answer to Anna. Anybody else would like to ask a question? Uh, just uh, turn on, uh, let me, let me get you. So attendees, if anybody would like a question, someone's got their hand up. Let me see who that is. Uh, Luis, a lot of talk. Is that Luis, uh, Luis Javier? Yes. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. If you want, you can turn your uh, video on. Oh, video? Uh, How do I do? If you want to, if you want to be seen. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to see if I could uh, do it because it's a different. I uh... oh, don't worry about it. Just give us your question. Um. Yeah, my question is, um, uh, it's have a lot, but I could start with one where, um, okay. Uh, what, what about like, I mean, I'm a small business, right? So very small business. So the first thing from what I took from your seminar just now, I think the first thing I should do is, is to get an assistant first and foremost. Tell me about how big your company, uh, what do you guys do? Before oh, we, we, we do interior construction uh, in New York city. Um, okay. High rise stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, we work, we, we do work uh, a lot of, a lot of um, apartment renovations and things of that nature. What's a typical job size? Uh, typical job size, um, money-wise or in value? Yeah, money-wise. Uh, was it about 100000 per per apartment, per renovation? So, so how right? many are you doing a year? What's your sales per year? Sales, I mean, it's ever since COVID, it declined a lot. So uh, mm -hmm. right now, last year, we did like, uh, just like under 2 million. Well, that's not bad. Okay, so a guy like you, I've got a lot of small contractors that, you know, they run hard and work hard. A guy who called me this morning, he's the same deal. He's in, and uh, I've got another guy in Mich in uh, New York City, same deal. It's hard. But uh, so you got two million, uh, you know, and you don't have a lot of money left over because, you know, even if you charge 25%, you know, 500 grand, you pay the taxes, you pay your overhead, you know, there's not a lot left. But still, um, do you have a field supervisor to run the work? That's the thing. The thing is, I, I, the thing is, I, I, I pretty much do everything. So it's pretty much I have the smartest guy on the job. Like, you that's know, you. I mean, no, no, uh, on my crew. So I just, I just, okay, I just. So, that so person. you definitely need an assistant in the office, even if it's even if it's four hours a day. Right. You need exactly. someone to help you with all the paperwork and all the stuff that you do. You shouldn't be doing. Right. The accounting. I mean, you're going to tell them what to do. You're going to train them. But the accounting, all the change order requests, typing up yeah, your bids, team. all that stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you're going to get a cheap software like QuickBooks Online or something. Exactly. And, uh, you're going to just use Excel for now or something like that, right? Right. Down, if down the road, if you want to invest in, uh, um, um, what's the one? Foreman, Foreman, Foreman. I, I'm drawing a blank here. Foreman. There's a really nice software that's not too expensive called Foreman. I can't remember the part. It's part two. I'll come right. up. It'll hit me in a minute, but that's, you know, that's three grand a year or something. But um, so you need some help. Yes. you got to get yourself out of the field as fast as possible. So that would be option two. Yeah. 
and and not only that, I, I you know, the um, in in my industry, I mean, well, you know, the real estate industry over here in New York is declining a lot. So I'm trying to go for more lucrative work. So yeah. I just I'm a recent I'm recently a vendor for you know for a couple of agencies for the city of New York. So Perfect. that's stay with the city. The city's money. Exactly. So that's, that's why where I the money to... is, and you've got. I'm assuming you're uh, MBE, maybe. Yeah, I'm MBE. Correct. Yeah. So get that figured out with the city and uh, exploit yeah. that, and you'll yeah. get work at nice markup. Yeah. So that's why I want to build good systems in place, and like I but, said, uh, I'm really you got you need you you got to get out of the field. Yes. That's killing you. You're out there all day. Yeah, definitely. Then you'll have time to create. I mean, you're the system. What you don't need system. It's just you. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so if you get now we're going to get our field organized. So we get a, we get a really strong field supervisor, right? Tenant improvement supervisor. They're they're out there. Okay. You know they're not cheap in New York. You probably pay seventy five minimum, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Seventy five to one hundred. You can do another million. You're not in the field running around. You're doing more bids. Yeah. And it should work for you. Right. But you know you have to make a decision to write a check. That's the hard part. Right, right. But the office, you can hire, uh, there's a lot of um, single moms or, I won't pick on single moms. There's a lot of people that will work three days a week, but but you want them having the same day all, every day, right. four hours a day, Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, eight to four, mm -hmm. 10 to six, 10 to, 10 to three, whatever, because you can count on them that way. Right. I want to know when they're going to be there. Right. Exactly. So you'll go out and run around and then you come back and give them the list and say, good, get all this done. And then you'll come back the next day and they'll, you'll, you'll meet them and go through it. Yep. So get yeah. me three bids on plumbing for these plans. They'll send them out and call a sub, whatever. Right. Yeah. They'll help you. So you don't have to get on the phone and harass all these guys. Yeah. They can do all that stuff for you. Right. Yeah. And then systems, you don't have time right now. I mean, obviously where, where would you start? You, when you, so let's start working on field systems. So, you know, we get a, if you get a supervisor, you need a job startup checklist, you need a weekly report, you need a customer yeah. meeting agenda, you know, think about what you really need. You're just doing it out of your head now. Right. And then the systems that I have now is like, I have a carpenter, I have my carpenter guys, I got my electricians, I got my plumber, and I just delegate them myself. That's, it's pretty Yeah, much, they're subs, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're subs. And I do have, a few workers that I you know that that work directly yeah, under me. But your super, if you get a field supervisor, they can manage all your subs. Yes. But you still got to manage your guy. Right. Just like we discussed, you're still the managing manager, right? Yeah, exactly. You're still gonna have to meet with a guy every week. Right. You're probably gonna have to go to the job every couple of days, but only if, you know you have to sit there all day like you're doing now. Yeah. I mean, he's going to open it up. He's going to lock it up. He's going to clean it up. He's going to make sure the electrician's there tomorrow. All that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there you go. Uh, okay. Any part two of the question, or is that going to give you something to think about? No, no. I'm going to. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got a question? Uh, just. Uh, uh, I got. You got to raise your hand. You got to go on the the thing there at the bottom. It says raise hand. So uh, then I'll let you talk. The webinar system's a little different. Yeah. Who'd like to share something? Oh, here's a guy. Oh, uh, Anna. Oh, Anna, allowed to talk. Anna, you still there? Anna? Uh, unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Anna. How you doing? Hi. What's up? Um, so I know your name. Who are you with? I know your name. I can't remember who you're with. Uh, Montes Electrics. I'm working as our controller. Uh, financial okay. Controller there. Electrical, right. Yeah. So my question is, we have, we're, I'm kind of debating with them to share their budget with the project managers and with their estimators um, so that we Budgets can get- for what? The, the company or for the job? For the jobs. Yeah, so definitely. That, how do you run a job? You don't know what the budget is. Come on, wake up. That's, that's what I'm trying to explain. To how, them how do you tell a foreman to go to go faster and if he doesn't even know what the goal is? They're they're basing it basically on like hours. Like we just tell well, them hours many. is fine. So the foreman, it's all about hours. Okay. All you right. tell them how many hours they got. They, they don't need to know the money. 
The okay. field needs to know the hours. They get so many hours to do this electrical, you know, the, the rough in, whatever. Right? Okay. And as far as the estimator, he's coming well, back. Well, the estimator me. bids it. Right, right. And he's coming back with it, asking me for the actual numbers from the PNL for, for the job. Okay, so at the end of the job, he needs to go through the completed job and look at versus his budget to determine mm -hmm. what did he miss. Exactly. He can't do that unless he knows the numbers. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So this, just... the estimator's goal is accuracy. Mm -hmm. Markup's a variable. Right. But you want the estimator to bid accurately. Well, he can't bid accurately if you don't know what the guys, how many hours they took. Correct. So he's got to know the actuals at the end of the job. All right. It's duh, another duh. Do I have to say duh more than once? No, it's just that I'm, that's what I'm trying to to. No, no, I, I'm on your team here. So yeah. I don't know, what, what are they afraid of? They got, you know, er, every owner's when at first is afraid that everybody's going to think they're rich and they're, they're not going to work hard. Mm -hmm. Or if they know the budget's 400 hours and the job's finishing way early, they'll just slow down. No, they won't. That's what supervisors do. They keep you working. Of course. So okay. it's a bad it's a bad, um, I don't know what you want to call it. It's non-truth. All mm -hmm. my guys, all the foremen I work, all the guys I work with, all the foremen see the hours every week, budget versus actual, every week. Okay. And, then they, and then they finish on time. And over, and over time, the bids get tighter and tighter because the estimator adjusts the estimate based on reality, not on guesses. Of course. I okay. call it the blind man method. Let me think. How many how many days will this job take for the crew? Uh, maybe four weeks for six guys. That's I call that the mystery method or the blind man method. Yeah. Then, okay, I got you. And then the other thing, the project gotcha. manager, project manager is one hundred percent accountable. His job description. I don't have time to show it to you, but uh, if you want one, just email me and say send me a project manager job description. But. Okay. Uh, they are 100% accountable. Their number one goal or role is to bring the job in on budget and manage the money. They are 100% accountable for the financial performance of that project. All right. How do they do that if they don't know the budget? Right. Like if I just, they get the stuff to me and I compare it and then I tell them if it is or not. But I feel like if they know like how much the equipment is out there, how much they're they're doing it, they make better decisions. I'm like, hey, right. this is the equipment is costing me five thousand dollars a month, and I really don't need it. Let's go ahead and you know return it and right. be more on top of it. Well, number one, I mean? if they don't see the budget, they don't care. Yeah, and they don't okay. get a bonus if they finish on time. So who cares? Just just spend money. Right. So so their their job is to bring it in on budget mm -hmm. or save money. So if they know they, they have 10000 for light fixtures, they're going to go out and try to negotiate a good contract with the fixture company, right? Mm -hmm. If they don't know what the budget is, the guy says twelve grand. they don't know. Okay, twelve grand. All right. All right. They don't see the need to negotiate down to ten grand. Right. That's just like, so, there's, so we start the job with a bid, accurate bid, hopefully, <laughs> with accurate hours. And we turn it over to the team. So that's a turnover meeting. Mm -hmm. And during the meeting, we create the budget for that job with the PM, the super, and the foreman. So everybody's on the same page. Okay. Now, foreman doesn't see the money. They just see the hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to continue to go over budget. Or you're yeah. going to have these huge ups and downs. Right. right. What city are you in? We're in Charlotte. Oh, down there. Yeah. Charlotte or Charles? Charlotte. Okay. Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to Charleston this or Columbia, South Carolina. For a webinar? Or I mean for uh, a I'm meeting with a, uh, one of my co coaching groups. Oh. Okay. okay. Anything else? I'll go to uh next guy here is all Ol thank you. Yeah, any anytime, no problem. Ola Ola go. Koki, I, I don't know if I saved your name right. I apologize. You on? That's just... okay. You're close enough. Ola, Ola Goki? Yes, sir. You're close enough. Okay, good. <laughs> Never <laughs> seen your name before. 
That's good. Where are you uh, from? Nigeria. Oh, wow. Are you in Nigeria right now? No, I'm in Atlanta. Oh, okay. It's so halfway there for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, first, the gentleman that spoke earlier, um, the contractor in New York. Yeah. There's a program that he can use uh, for to manage his projects uh, that connects to QuickBooks, uh, which is a contractor foreman. I'm not sure that's, if that's what you're oh, trying that's to the name. It's contractor foreman. Yes. I said I said foreman, but I couldn't remember. It's contractor foreman. Right. Is a real good job project, a simple field project management system that hooks into QuickBooks. That's correct. I have a lot and of then, smaller contractors, uh, hands-on contractors using it. They've really upgraded their software. It used to be kind of weak, but not strong. They have. It's it's becoming strong. And just right, they, it, it gets it got strong after I decided to move from QuickBooks to something else. So. Well, that's, but, uh, that's phase two. Yeah. Um, yeah the other ahead. question is uh, for the for the Vegas, July 27 through 29th. Um, yeah, yeah I, I have, it's a workshop. It's going to be four, four or five guys or gals. And we're going to we're going to do your business plan. We're going to look at what your weaknesses and strengths are and we're going to help you decide decisions of what to do to, to improve your company. So it's okay. just a small group, hands-on. Well, it's a, it's a workshop. It's not really a sit there and listen to George talk. Okay. So it's like, what, what's three things you need to do to improve your field? Write them down. Okay. Let's talk about them as a group. What could he do? So it'll be a really wor a workshop. Now um, I'm trying to find my calendar. I, I can't remember if I, uh moved it uh, it might be in i i haven't actually set the uh i had very little um i had a couple guys on the maybe list but uh i had very little uh, normally i get really strong response i don't know if it's what it is summer covid covid rebound economies in the toilet i, I really don't know what's going on uh, i was going to do it either las vegas or newport beach somewhere it's only an hour flight for me i could do it in phoenix i haven't picked the spot yet but I'm trying to after we get a few people interested, I'll, you know, wherever you guys all want to go, I'll go. I just don't want to fly okay. to New York City. I'm California. To New York City. Atlanta is a great place. What's that? Atlanta is a great place to visit. Well, we can do it there. You just fly <laughs> me there and I'll do it. No problem. There you go. So uh, it's, uh, be... it's, so my normal boot camp is just me training. Uh, it's kind of like what we just did for an hour. Okay. Me telling what to do. And then a little bit of in and out or interactive. This will be all interactive. It's I'm helping you as your coach. That's why I want to have it to, but it's because of that, it's only three or four or five people and I'm mm -hmm. going to charge more. Okay. Any idea of um, about average cost on that? It'll be under $1 million. <laughs> that works. <laughs> no, it'd be like three to four grand. Okay. I mean, for me to come to your office, it's four, four, 4,500 a day. So I'm trying to keep it cheap. If I, it, so I, I haven't set the, I, I, I haven't set the price, but I, it's going to be in that range. Just say 3,500 okay. for now. And uh, it'll okay. be two, two days, two and a half days. <clears throat> I don't have, um, you know, I got to, whatever you want, I'm kind of open. We'll do a consensus. Okay. But, so but I haven't question. booked the spot yet because I don't have enough people. But it'll be easy to get a conference from somewhere. All right, that works. I've been following you for a minute. <clears throat> for a minute, I have some of your old books. Yeah. The other question I have is the new updated books. They are your training books. Do you have these? Are they still on CDs or do you have it on? Okay. Something? So you've got my construction book, right? Yes. This one, let me get it. You've got this one, right? I have that, and then I have those little five. Okay, clips. that this is the this is about three years old. It's it's ninety percent of my updated stuff. I have okay. an online. If you go to my website, which is hardhatbizcoach.com, I just updated right. my website. I have a brand new website. Everything's under hardhatbizcoach.com. It 
Don't go to hard hat presentation. That's my old one. There's nothing wrong with it. We're just going to delete it. But all the everything's on hard hat biz coach now, including okay. my biz school. So I have five courses on my biz school. Uh, there are five, five, five hour courses. So that's my latest and greatest. So it's five, five hour workshops. And you download them to your computer and you get about a 20 to 30 page workbook for each of the five courses. Okay. And if you use the discount code, you look through my newsletter, it's on there. It's, uh, I always forget what it is. You're going to make me look that up or, you, or just send <laughs> me an email, I'll send it to you. I'll send it on the, on the, re, on the rebound when we, uh, right. when we send you guys all a thank you. It's uh, hard hat special 33% off. That'll get you 33% okay. off. So you'll get 25 hours of courses for like 400 bucks or something. They're 200 each. So you'll save quite a bit. Okay. That works. So These that's medium. my latest. That's my latest. I'm right in the middle. Right. I'm right in the middle of creating all my templates. And you actually, it's actually on my website, but I don't have them loaded yet. I'm literally a couple of days away from that. So you'll be able to buy all my templates. And right. I've got about a yeah. hundred templates. Awesome. You know, um, you don't have you, templates. If you've already got Procore or you're already on something else, you know, you don't need them. But anyway. <laughs> You were going to, you said you had uh, project management, uh, project manager's uh, job description. Yeah. Do you have one for other departments like estimating? Did you buy my book? That? Did you buy my book? Which one? This one? I, no, I've not bought it yet. I'm going to buy that one. I have it's the older one. ones. <clears throat> you buy this one. It's all about contractors. And then when you buy it, send me an email, tell me about it, and I'll send you all the job descriptions. I'm going to send you the Biz Builder Blueprint template and okay. include this all the job descriptions for every position. Awesome. It's 40 bucks on Amazon and uh, and then the template's free. Okay. Okay. That works. I'll get that. Yeah.